In this problem, we're told to determine the distance x that the rope must sag if it is to be within the recommended safety range and Christian's mass is 72 kilograms. And so B says if the tra traverse is incorrectly set up so that the rope sags by only one-fourth the distance found in A, determine the tension force in the rope. Will the rope break? So you can read the question if you want, or you probably should, but the first thing that we want to do here is actually draw what's going on. I know they give us an image, but I think it's easier if we draw it ourselves. So... We know that this distance right here is going to be 25 meters, right? Because they say from one tree to the other is 25 meters. So this is going to be one of our trees. So here's one of our trees. And so we know it's going to go a distance of 25 meters to this tree right here. So we know this distance is going to be 25 meters. And so we know we've got this rope hanging from both sides, essentially. And it's going to be holding this guy up. So just imagine that's in the middle. It's not that good of a drawing. but So we've got this guy. He's in this. Or he's hanging on it. These ropes are hanging. Uh, holding him up. And so uh, that's going to be that. And then what we also want to label is. Notice how it's saying to determine the distance x. And so this right here is this distance. It's the distance from here to here. So I'm going to label it x. So what we're trying to do is find this. So the first thing that you want to do is draw a free body diagram of what's going on here. So this is our person, so we want to draw the free body diagram of them. So imagine this rock is our person. So what different forces do we have acting on them? So we have a force that's pulling them down, right? Which is just m times g, their mass times gravity. And then we also have this force that's holding them up, right? Or, they, or else they would be falling. And so this force is we're just going to call uh, f sub y, because essentially this is just the force in the y direction. It's just the tension. So that's going to be that. So what we want to do next is label our drawing a bit different. So let's actually put it on our drawing. So this is going to be m times g. We have f sub y holding it up. So f sub y. And then what I'm going to do is split this into a vector. And you'll see why we do this in a bit. But essentially what you can imagine is that these are triangles. And so these are going to be the vectors. So we have the force of tension, right, of each of these bands. They can do some tension, right? We know it's going to be 2.9 or whatever. So each of these are 2.9. And then I'm going to label this as T sub X and T sub Y in this T sub Y and T sub X. So essentially these are just the tension of each of these and we just split them up in the directions. That's generally what you want to do on a problem like this where you have something sagging like this. So that's going to be that. Let's write down what we're given in terms of uh, actual numbers. So we're given the mass of the person, which is 72 kilograms. So mass equals 72 kg. We are also we also know that gravity, right? Gravity equals minus 9, or I'm just going to label it as positive. So positive 9.8 meters per second squared. That's gravity. And then we also know this distance right here, T, uh, is going to be 2.9 kilonewtons. So T equals 2.9 kilonewtons. And we know that because it says, uh, where is it? Yeah, should only be required to go under this force, 2.9 kilonewtons. So each of these, 2.9 kilonewtons. And that's essentially just 2,900 newtons, right? Kilo is 1,000, so just multiply by 1,000, 2,900 newtons. So what we want to do is create an equation. And so essentially, we're trying to solve for this, right? We're trying to solve for x. And the best way to do that is by using a bit of trig. So if we label each of these 12.5 meters, right? Because we know this is going to be in the middle, right? Because you'll go to the middle. If you sag down like this, we can see he's in the middle too. Uh, but essentially what we're trying to do is solve for x here. And so the way we're going to do that is by using trig and by finding different angles. So essentially what we're going to do here is find this angle right here uh, of these triangles. And if we can find this angle, we know that this angle right here is going to be the exact same as this angle right here. right? That's just one of the rules. You should probably know that from geometry. But essentially this angle is the same as this one. They don't really look at it because my image is a bit off, but just know that they're the same. And then what you can do is if you have this angle, right, we know the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite over adjacent, right? So we can solve for this x if we can get this angle. So that's what we need to do first. So how do we find this angle? Well, we know, or well, what we need to do is find t sub y. And we can do that because uh, we can use one of the formulas to solve for it. So notice how mg has to be the same as uh, 2ty. So essentially, mg is equal to t sub y plus t sub y. So imagine t sub y and t sub y are the vertical components right, of your 
uh, tension force, right, essentially. And so these have to be the same as m times g, or else like we would be moving, right, because it would be pushing you in one direction. And so keep in mind what we can do is I'm just going to rewrite this as 2ty because you're just adding them, 2t sub y. We know m and g. We know them, right? m and g right here. We can solve for t sub y. And if we can get t sub y, we can solve for this angle. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So we know m is going to be 72, right? 72 kilograms. g is 9.8. So it equals 2t sub y. Um, so essentially divide by 2. I'm actually going to move this over here because it's kind of taking up the screen. But 72 times 9.8 is equal to 2t sub y divided by 2. So t sub y, if you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 352.8. So that's going to be this right here, 352.8. And so we also know t right here is 2.9 kilonewtons, right? I'm going to write it as newtons, actually, 2,900 newtons. And so now we know that, we can actually solve for the angle, right? So we know the sine of an angle, sine of theta, equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is uh, 352.8, and then this is going to be 2,900. So 352.8 over 2,900. And so what we can do is just, just take the arc sine. So the arc sine of 352.8, over 2900 it's going to give us our angle if you go ahead and do this you're going to get that it equals or theta is going to be equal to 6.98 degrees so that's going to be this angle right here and so keep in mind how i said these two angles are the same this one right here and this one so essentially this angle right here is 6.98 degrees so now we know that we can actually solve so we can solve for this length right here so we know the tangent of x equals or so the tangent of our angle which we know not x uh, 6.98 is equal to opposite over adjacent, so x over 12.5. And so what we can do is solve for x, and that's exactly what they're asking for in A. So multiply both sides by 12.5. If you go ahead and do this, x is going to be equal to 1.53. So keep in mind our units, we're using meters, right? Meters, so it's going to be in meters. So 1.53 meters, if you want to round it, you can make it 1.5 meters or whatever you want to do. But this right here is going to be your answer to A. Now what we're going to want to do is move on to B. So B is going to say if the traverse, or I don't know how to say that word, but this thing right here is incorrectly set up so it sags by only one-fourth this distance. So we know this distance, right, 1.53. In B, it's going to be uh, just one-fourth of this. So essentially what we're going to want to do is divide it or multiply it by 1.25. So it's just going to become 0.383 meters. So if I redraw the triangle, right, something like this, this is 0.383 meters. This is still 12.5. And so what we're trying to do is determine the tension force uh, in the rope. So essentially what we're going to do is just do the reverse of what we did, and that's going to be allow us to find the tension force in the rope. So we're going to find this angle, use this angle, and then we can solve. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, it's going to be a little bit different this time, though. So we know the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 0.383 over 12.5. So if you do uh, the arc tangent of theta of this, you're going to get it equals 1.755 degrees. So that's going to be the degrees. And there's a special trick you can use for this one. So what you can do in order to solve for uh, the total tension force uh, is you can use this formula. So essentially, you can just do mass times gravity over two times the sine of your angle. So if you have this angle, right, if you have that, you can use this formula. So we're just going to plug this in here. It's going to allow us to solve for the force. And then we're going to determine whether or not it will break it. So if we plug this in, uh, m we know is the mass of our person, 72. So I'm actually going to do it over here. So 72 times uh, 9.8, which is gravity, over... 2 times the sine of our angle, 1.755. If you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 11,519. And so this is going to be in newtons, right? So this is the number of newtons. Uh, just keep in mind, we measure it in newtons. I'm going to convert it to kilonewtons, so just round a bit. So make it 11.5 kilonewtons, right? Just divide by 1,000, and I just rounded to 500. So 11.5 kilonewtons. Keep in mind what it's able to do. 
it's going to be able to provide a tension force of up to 29 kilonewtons. So is 11.5 greater than this amount? It's not, right? So it's not going to break it. It's going to do a lot. Like it's going to increase a lot uh, more than the safety factor or whatever they want to do. But keep in mind, it's not going to break it because it doesn't go over that amount. So your answer to B, uh, determine the tension force. Uh, it's going to be 11.5 kilonewtons. And so is the rope going to break? No, it's not because it's not greater. So your answer to B is going to be no. And so, yeah, hopefully you found this uh, video useful.